Historian Puya Alim Khan joins me now live from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, great to have you here with us on TRT World. I think one thing uh, that the latest developments tell us is that even the United States is helpless when it comes to stopping Israel. Uh, you know, it, it, it often criticizes Israel, but it never really does anything substantive to stop it. Uh, in fact, this has been the, the problem for the past six months. Is the United States administration has been incredibly or increasingly critical of the uh, Israeli war in Gaza and the West Bank, but it really hasn't changed its policy. And not only has it not changed its policy, it's gotten more and more involved in the Middle East, like striking Yemen and now intercepting projectiles fired from Iran the other day uh, on their way to Israel. So uh, it could it could say not to do something, but the policy will be consistent, as it has been, to support Israel unconditionally, which in a way is a green light for Israel to do what it likes vis-a-vis -vis Iran and the rest of the region. I mean... On papers, uh, the U.S. says it does not want to be part of any sort of response when it comes to Israel's retaliation or attack, rather, on Iran, which uh, appears to be imminent. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is uh, the U.S., as much as it would like to disagree with Israel, will be a part of it. What do you think? So it is, in a way, part of it already. Uh, those are uh, it's American technology. That's American weaponry that Israel is using um, in Lebanon. Uh, in uh, if it go if it's going to use it in Iran, that's going to be American weaponry. That's an American diplomatic cover at the United Nations um, that prevented any U UN resolution that condemned Israel's bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Uh, and then that was an American involvement with France and Great Britain and Jordan that uh, intercepted uh, Iranian projectiles. So I don't think America will be any more involved, but it is already involved. Uh, this is this is there's always this, there's always this fear that it's going to spiral into a regional war. It already is a regional war that is engulfing the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, the two Palestinian territories, Lebanon, Yemen, and now Iran. And this is really all rooted in the fact that. Um, the United States has been solidly, solidly behind Israel from the beginning, no matter all the excesses in Israel's military conduct in, in the Gaza Strip. Right. And uh, talking about Netanyahu, there are clear disagreements in the Israeli war cabinet and uh, the wider political spectrum uh, of the country. Where does uh, this uh, play into Netanyahu's position in uh, leading Israel amid, uh, ongoing, amid, amid this ongoing war? Well, I think that it, continued conflict with Iran or an escalation would distract from the Israeli-imposed famine and the massive staggering death toll in the Gaza Strip. So in a way, I think um, there are people in the cabinet that want continued escalation with Iran really as a, as a distraction from what Israel is very intentionally doing in the Gaza Strip. Um, but. But I want to be clear, the, Israel has been striking Iran for years, whether it has been assassinating Iranian scientists within Iran or bombing Iranian forces in, in Syria and now the Iranian consulate in Damascus. I think the thinking has been in Iran that uh, Israel is trying to bait Iran into a, a, a wider conflict, and it hasn't taken that bait. It has uh, basically, not because Iran, the Iranian government is peaceful, but it has turned the other cheek as a matter of strategy. And the hardline thinking has been that the more you don't respond, the more Israel escalates. And when that escalation led to the bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, the hardline argument won the day. We're saying that we told you we haven't responded, and now look what's happening. And now came the response. And Iran is prepared for a counter counter strike. I want to. I want to. When I, I, I'm using this language very intentionally. The strike that Iran did um, the other day against Israel was a retaliatory strike. So if Israel responds, that's a counter-counter strike. Okay, now, uh, Puya, I think uh, the primary reason why there is a lot of concern among the international community when it comes to tensions between Israel and Iran is that uh, both these countries may have undeclared nuclear weapons. So let me ask you, in case of an all-out war between the two countries, how likely is it to, for it to turn into a nuclear conflict? So I think there's consensus that Iran does not have nuclear weapons. Iran has a nuclear program, which is, an enti which is entitled to have one under uh, international obligations. 
The concern is that Iran would then militarize its nuclear program, but it does not have nuclear weapons. That's a consensus. American intelligence agencies will tell you that as well, and so, so will the Israeli ones. Uh, the concern isn't that it will lead to nuclear warfare. Um, the concern is that this war is a regional war that's spiraling and spiraling and spiraling. And I think that most European powers are involved. West uh, Germany is supplying Israel with weapons. France and England and the United States inter intervened in, in the um, in the um, Iranian retaliatory strike. Everyone's already really involved. They just don't want it to escalate further. But it is already escalating. And all of this could have been stopped months ago when um, the it was very apparent that the war in Gaza was going poorly and so many Palestinian civilians had been killed and are continue, continuing to be killed. This is a regional war. Everyone's already involved. And if they want to stop it, they have to stop the war in Gaza first. That is the root cause of everything that's happening in the Middle East as we speak. Fascinating insights into the topic. Puya Amilgam, thank, thanks very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.